When we talk about U.S. funding anti-government protests here in Thailand, we're going to start hearing the term spring used, like the Thai spring, or as this article calls it, a Southeast Asian spring, or as this Financial Times article refers to it, as an ASEAN spring. And what they're referring to is this so-called Milk Tea Alliance, where it's these U.S. government-funded opposition groups from across Asia united under the common denominator of being anti-Chinese. And now if the term spring sounds familiar, it's because it's a throwback to the 2011 Arab Spring. And if you don't believe me that the U.S. government engineered the Arab Spring in 2011, you can just read this New York Times article titled, U.S. Groups Helped Nurture Arab Uprisings. And it was published in 2011, and it admits a number of the groups and individuals directly involved in the revolts and reforms sweeping the region received training and financing from groups like the IRI, NDI, and Freedom House. And if you go down a little further, they admit that all of those organizations are in turn funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, and that the NED is funded by U.S. Congress and overseen by the U.S. State Department. Now, there's something else interesting in this New York Times article. If you go down a little bit further, you'll notice them talk about youth leaders attending a 2008 technology meeting. And this technology meeting was part of the Alliance of Youth Movements. And what this was, was a forum where U.S.-backed agitators from around the globe were brought to New York City. They were trained, equipped, and funded and sent back to their respective countries to overthrow their respective governments. And this was years before the Arab Spring actually begun. And now we all remember how the Arab Spring ended. Uh, Libya completely destroyed, Syria partially destroyed, and suffering a U.S. military occupation where the U.S. military is stealing Syria's oil out of the country. And then there is Yemen, which is considered by the U.N. as the worst humanitarian crisis in the world today. Of all of the things that sprung from the Arab Spring, democracy was not one of them. So we have to be very careful about this Asia Spring, which is being funded by the exact same organizations in the U.S. government. Now, is there a organization like the Alliance of Youth Movements today that is helping train, equip, and finance agitators across Asia, just as was done during the Arab Spring? And the answer is yes. It's called the Oslo Freedom Forum, and the BBC even made a video about it. Oslo Freedom Forum isn't secret, but certainly obscure. In the basement of this four-star hotel, human rights activists come to what feels a bit like a school for revolution. This workshop, how to make sure your message, whether in Egypt, Ukraine, Hong Kong, China, North Korea, catches on. This may not evoke the spirit of the barricades, but the teaching here is to be successful, to topple a government for good. You have to be organized and to plan meticulously. And activists here have been involved in helping to organize the current protests in Hong Kong. Their plan to put thousands of people on the streets of the territory was in fact hatched nearly two years ago. We've been told many of Hong Kong's demonstrators were trained long before taking to the streets to use non-violent action, as they describe it, as a weapon of mass destruction. Protesters were, uh, were, were taught how to behave during a protest, so how to keep ranks, how to uh, speak to police, um, how to uh, manage their own movement, how to use marshals within their movement. So these are people who are specially trained. There's also you know, how to behave when arrested, uh, you know, practical things like the need for food and water, you know, um, that uh, movement can last longer when people are taken care of, and also how to manage a water cannon being used against you, and other types of police violence. It's meticulous. Absolutely. The BBC admits that these Hong Kong agitators went abroad, received training and backing, and went back to Hong Kong to create unrest. And then when we see articles like this Thailand protest, why young activists are embracing Hong Kong's tactics, it's because Thailand's agitators also received the same exact training through the Oslo Freedom Forum. Prominent Thai opposition figures all went to the Oslo Freedom Forum as well. This includes Prawit, who at the time was working at The Nation, but he now works for Khao Sot, owned by Tanaton's family. 
there's the notoriously anti-Chinese student activist Netwit. There was also rap against dictatorship. And most recently was Tanaton himself. We could just look at what the Arab Spring did to North Africa and the Middle East, and then we can look at what this Asia Spring is going to do to Asia. This is a foreign government trying to overthrow not just the Thai government, but governments across the region, and to do so specifically to spite China at the cost of everyone's peace and prosperity in Asia. If you like the video, please like and share it. And if you subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. And uh, thank you very much for watching.